The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Sit down. Anywhere you like. I have a small confession to make. I am crazy about ghosts. And I cannot for the life of me comprehend why anyone should be afraid of them. What, after all, what do ghosts do? They haunt, that's all. To haunt means to visit, to frequent. In short, to hang around. What's so scary about that? A hopeful lover hangs around a lot. If an inspiring lover or a wistful compatriot can hang around without inspiring fear, why not an anxious ghost? Is it... Is it really you, Paul? Huh? Yes, Melba. It is I. Paul. <laughs> Don't cry, Melba. I can't... I can't help it. All right, dearest. Go ahead and cry. Paul. Paul, tell me something. What? Are you happy? Where... Where you are? I'm really sorry you asked me that, Melba. mystery drama, Ghost Talk, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Lenka Peterson and Elliot Reed. It is sponsored in part by Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice and imported Vina Rosé wine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Traditionally, they haunt large, decrepit mansions with long halls, extensive staircases, and musty attics. But these big old edifices have all disappeared from our landscape. And it is more than likely that the ghost of today has to restrict himself to one-bedroom apartments with bath, kitchenette, and dining area. Poor ghosts. Will they give up haunting altogether? Or will they do what we have done? I just... Melba? You have my number? Yes, Leonard. Both at home and at the office. If there's anything I can do, Melba, anything at all. I'll call you. Bless you, my dear. Oh, Paul. Where are you? Where? all gone. Leonard Whipple was the last to leave. I'm all alone. No, I'm not crying. I'm trying to be brave and calm and, and remember everything you told me. Leonard said to call him if I needed anything, but <laughs> what does that mean? I need my husband. I need Paul. <laughs> oh, no, Irene, I couldn't go to the movies. No. I'll just sit here and think about Paul. All the beautiful memories. 22 years of beautiful memories. You know, Irene, I keep thinking all the time of what you said to me after the funeral. You said Paul will never be really dead as long as he's remembered. I keep saying that over and over Paul isn't really dead, as long as he's remembered. I want to thank you, Irene, for that beautiful thought. It means everything to me. Oh, Melba. Melba. 
Alba. How goes it, Paul? Well, hello. It's Bruce, isn't it? I'm new here. I haven't got everybody straight yet. <laughs> you never will. It doesn't matter. Yes, I am Bruce. Mind if I join you? I wish you would. You had a particularly beatific expression on your face just now as I was floating by. Oh, I was thinking of my wife. My wife, Melba. Yeah, why? Why? Well, actually, because she was thinking of me. Remembering our wedding day. I was touched. You are really very new here, aren't you? Oh, yes. Very. At the start, everybody is either touched that they're remembered, apprehensive that they won't be, or furious that they're not. Melba feels that no one is really dead as long as he's remembered. Is that what you want to be? Not really dead? It sounds nice. Well, it isn't. I don't know how you can say that. Because I happen to know. From bitter personal experience. My sainted mother remembered me every day of her life after I died. Till the day she died and joined me here. Since her arrival, I'm happy to say, we've exchanged precisely six words. A while back, she had the grace to apologize. I'm sorry, son, I didn't understand. Those were the six words. Sorry for what? For remembering me. What was she supposed to do? Well, forget, for goodness sakes. I wouldn't expect her to forget immediately, of course. That would be unreasonable. But as soon as possible, put me out of her mind. My life on earth was over. Well, I'm sure she meant well, your mother. After you're here a while, you'll realize that everybody doesn't mean well. And quite often does a lot of harm. But your mother loved you. Then why not leave me alone to enjoy myself? Why wake up in the middle of the night to remember how handsome I looked the day I graduated from dental college? So inconsiderate. Why was it inconsiderate? Because, my dear fellow, if she kept it up long enough, I'd have to stop whatever I was doing and go visit her. Visit her? How could you do that? How? Well, the way it's always done. As a ghost, of course. Irene? It's me. Oh, all right, I guess. Leonard was here. We sent out for Chinese food. He left about an hour ago. Oh, I'm just sitting here and remembering. I got out the old picture album to show Leonard. <laughs> I don't think Leonard cares too much for travel. I wasn't sorry when he left. Looking at the snapshots and remembering the beautiful life I had with Paul, it seemed to bring him closer. Oh, I mean it, Irene. A couple of times, I, I felt as though he was right here in the room with me. Honestly. <laughs> Oh, Bruce, that you, Paul? I had a terrible time finding you. Well, now you have. I asked everybody where you were, and nobody knew, and then Salome said, oh, he's probably out strolling among the stars. That's his favorite pastime. But I had no idea how many stars there are. You still haven't any idea. Actually, neither have I, and I've been here heaven knows how long. So far, this is my favorite galaxy. But, of course, I haven't seen them all. Has anyone, do you think? Oh, I suppose he has. He must have seen everything since the beginning of time. And before that? Ah, uh, yes. What made you come looking for me? Something special? Bruce, I can't get a moment to myself on account of Melba. Your wife. You know what she did. She got out an old snapshot album and started looking over all the pictures we took on our vacations, birthdays, Christmases. Typical. They all do it. The worst part is she showed all these pictures to a friend of mine, of hers, ours, Leonard Whipple. He couldn't have cared less. She's really hanging on to you, isn't she? It's very nice of her and all that, but it's it, it's terribly exciting for me being here. Everything's so completely different. Oh. 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 There she goes again, hear her. Oh, oh dear. Dear Paul. Hear that? Vaguely. She just keeps after me and keeps after me. Well, what me. about this Leonard Whipple? Well, he's a very nice guy, but he's not going to hang around much longer if she makes him look at pictures of our honeymoon in the Grand Canyon. Mm. You couldn't just ignore her, I suppose. Well, she's my wife, and I love her. I mean, she was my wife, and I did love her. But now, things are different. I'd say so. How? 
Well, for goodness sake, look there. If it isn't him. Him? You mean it? Really? Him? I haven't seen him in eons. I never have. Uh, sir? Sir, please? Hmm? No. Yes, yes, it's Bruce. Yes. Am I right? Yes, sir. And this is Paul. He's new. I know. Hello, Paul. I... I'm really thrilled to meet you, sir. The galaxy is looking well, don't you think? I love this galaxy, sir. You set it out so neatly. Mm. There's one star I've been concerned about. I think it's beginning to twinkle out. Uh, sir, as long as we were so fortunate as to run into you like this, could we have your advice about something? You know I dislike giving advice. It's for me, sir. I don't know what to do about my wife. Is she here? Oh, no. She's with the living. On Earth. Oh. And she's grieving. Well, that's to be expected. She'll stop after a while. She doesn't show any signs of stopping. I, I was wondering if I shouldn't, you know, appear to her. Bruce says it's a simple procedure. Well, you could do that, of course. I never thought very highly of that ghost business, so theatrical. Huh? But if it'll make her feel better? Mm, I suppose we do owe a measure of responsibility to the living. You think I could go back for a short visit? Well, you're free to do as you like. If I were to tell you what to do, you wouldn't be free anymore, would you? Well, if you just tell me what you think. No, I really can't do that. That would be tantamount to telling you what to do because of uh, me being who I am. You see, you think I have all the answers. Everybody thinks so. Well, I don't. There are countless things I haven't found answers to. <laughs> However, like everyone else, I keep trying. Now, if I really have to go to see if that poor star is feeling any pain. You'll both excuse me? He wasn't much help. Well, that's his way. Oh, dear. Oh, there she goes again. Bruce, I'm going to turn ghost and visitor. At least you've made a decision. How do I go about it? Well, there are no hard and fast rules. Actually, not many of us do it. It's, it's, it's considered kind of freaky. Freaky? Look how many of us there are and how few of them. If we all took to ghost walking, we'd have them outnumbered trillions to one. I don't care. I want to do it. I just need to know how. Well, you can do it in the old-fashioned way. Clanking chains, winds whistling through the trees, moon behind black clouds and all that. Uh, I don't think Nobo would go for that. Well, then there's the crying, sobbing type of ghost. Inconsolable weeping. Since I don't feel particularly inconsolable. Well, then there's the ghost that flits through the halls, appearing and disappearing. Now you see it, now you don't. Uh, we don't have a hall, just a rather small foyer. Mm. Uh, can't I just appear in some simple, straightforward way, just say... Here I am, dear. You wouldn't want to start with one weird, uncanny shriek. I wouldn't know how. Or a sardonic laugh. Well, what would I be laughing at? Oh, life, death, anything in between. Well, if you don't want to do any of those things, things which he calls theatrical, then just appear. That's more my style, I think. But wrap a bit of vapor around you. After all, they need something to identify you by. And don't stay too long. And above all... Don't let it depress you. Why should it depress me? <laughs> You'll find out, my friend. You'll find out. It never occurred to me that a visitation by a ghost could be depressing. Take now that well-known ghost of Hamlet's father, speaking spookily from the battlements at Elsinore. Of course, he didn't sound happy. How could he when his own brother had just killed him and promptly married his widow? He sounded angry, yes. Vengeful, yes. But depressed, no. And certainly not depressing. I'll return shortly with Act Two. hero Paul has decided to return to Earth as a ghost and haunt the three-room apartment where he once lived with his wife, Melba. He has simply draped what remains of him 
in a shred of celestial vapor. And now, as he gazes through the living room window of what used to be his own tenth floor apartment, he can scarcely be distinguished from the melting moonlight that floods the room inside. Nothing's changed. She hasn't changed a thing. Let's take our coffee into the living room, Leonard. Good idea. I think I picked the wrong time. Bring in that plate of cookies, will you? Right. Not those same old oatmeal things. I've always been crazy about oatmeal cookies. They were Paul's favorites. Set them down there. Mm-hmm. Cream in your coffee? Sugar? Uh, black, please. No sugar. That's the way Paul took his. His after-dinner coffee in the morning. Cream and sugar, yes, but after dinner, nothing. Is that so? And milk in his tea. You don't say. That's the English way, you know. Milk and tea. I didn't know Paul was English. He wasn't. Oh, I see. Oh, way back, five, six generations, he was English, but... I, myself, was born in Wales. Is that so? Oh, well, that's near England. Richard Burton is Welsh, you know. For goodness sakes. Why, didn't you know that? The last movie Paul and I saw together had Richard Burton in it. I I wanted to show you something fascinating. Paul's World War II uniform. I've saved it all these years. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, not tonight. And his captain's bars. Some other time. I, I've really got to be moving on. Oh, if you really have to. Such a beautiful night. I think I'll walk home. Yes, a beautiful night. Oh, just look at the moonlight streaming through that window. Care to walk away with me in the moonlight? Oh, no, I don't think so, Leonard. I have a lot of things to do here. Well, if there's anything you need, you have my number. Yes. At home and at the office. Good night, Melba. Thanks for dinner. Thank you for bringing all that fried chicken. Oh, it it was nothing, really. Good night. Good night, Leonard. Oh, Paul. Dear Paul. I need you, Paul. Melba. I need you so. I'm right here. What was that? I said, I'm here. Paul? Yes, me, Paul. But, but where? By the window, dear. I can't see you. I'll step inside. That'll be better. Oh, I see. I, I see something. You see me. I dare say I've changed somewhat. Oh, can that be you? It is. I. Really, you? Well, fairly, really. Everything considered... As real as I can get. Oh, I, I can't believe it. Believe it, Melba. Oh, Paul. How are you? Oh, never mind about me. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Really? All right? Everything considered. Everything considered, I'm better than all right. Paul, tell me. Are you happy? Happy? I must know. Are you happy? I'm sorry you asked me that question. Why should you be sorry? Happy just isn't a word we use. Why not? Because it... It doesn't mean much once you've died. Oh, Paul, you're not saying you're unhappy. No, I'm not saying that. Then what are you saying? Look, Melba, I didn't really come here to talk about me. What about you? Well... Naturally, I'm not happy. Why not? Without you? What about Leonard Whipple? Oh, him. What's the matter with Leonard? Well, nothing's the matter with him. He's just not you. Well, I'm not me either. Not the way I was before I... Oh, but I remember you the way you were. And as long as I remember... Melba, honey, I don't even remember me the way I was. You don't? Not very well. You remember me, don't you? Sort of. Sort of? Well, you were my wife. I'm still your wife. Not 
exactly. There will never be anyone for me but you. Never, I swear it. Please, Melba. We are man and wife forever, for eternity. And now that I know you can return to me, not in the flesh perhaps, but even like this. It's strange. It's weird, but it's enough for me. I can live on as your wife and on and on till I join you. Melba. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, I knew you could never really die as long as I remembered you. And you see, here you are, living on. Hello, Irene. Me. Guess what? You'll never guess. Paul was here. Yes. Right here in this living room. All right, then he's ghost, whatever. Well, he looked different. Yes, yeah, sort of steamy. Kind of like a, a street light on a foggy night. But I knew it was Paul, all right. His voice and the things he said and the way he called me Melba, dear. Well, it, he didn't say too much. I, I asked him, was he happy? Because naturally I wanted to know, but he wouldn't say. He wouldn't say he wasn't unhappy either. Isn't that weird? He wanted to know about me. Am I happy? <laughs> Isn't that sweet? And he asked about Leonard Whipple. Imagine him knowing I've been seeing Leonard off and on. Of course, I told him Leonard doesn't mean a thing to me, that there could never be anyone else for me. I said, Paul, we are man and wife for eternity. I said, you can never truly die, Paul, as long as I remember you. And then, you know what, Irene? There was this big, great, big noise, a a crash sort of... No, not like thunder, more like like music, like a chord out of Beethoven or somebody. And all of a sudden, he was gone. But he'll be back. Like you said, no one is really dead as long as he's remembered. Sir. Oh, oh, sir. May I speak with you? Hmm? No. Oh, it's uh, Paul, isn't it? Uh, Sir, Uh, could I have just a moment of your time? I have all the time in the world. I have all the time there is. But I don't quite know how much time there is, but I do know I have all of it. Uh, Does that star look all right to you? I I wouldn't know. I I don't quite know how a star is supposed to look. Please, sir. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Of course. You want to talk to me. Uh, What about? I... I've been back to the earth. My wife kept calling me. You said we owed some responsibility to the living, so I... Did I say that? Yes, sir, you did. Oh. I wonder if I was right about that. These earth trips can be very upsetting... Mine was. My wife wanted to know, am I happy? They're all so preoccupied with happiness, aren't they? I didn't know what to say to her. I I couldn't answer her. This woman I'd been married to for half my life, I couldn't talk to her. It was as though we were living in two different worlds. Well? Oh. Uh, Oh, oh, yes, I, I see what you mean. Still, shouldn't I have been able to answer her? Well, what could you have said? Well, that... That happy is a word that doesn't mean anything anymore. Happy is nothing without unhappy. The way pleasure is nothing without pain. The way health is nothing without illness. Euphoria is nothing without depression. Oh, you know what I mean, sir. I do know, yes. It's ridiculous to say I'm happy when I'm never unhappy. What I am is... What? You are is what? What I am is free. Yes. I'm free. I'm Paul, and I'm free. And I'm free to be Paul, no more, no less than me. Me, Paul. Sir, why couldn't I be free like that before? (sighs) Dear, I ask myself that same question all the time. The only answer is that I miscalculated somewhere. And I did give those people the power to think, to reason, to figure out the sensible way to do things. Why don't they use what I gave them? 
Why leave everything up to me? Theirs isn't the only planet in the universe, you know. I do have other things to look after, but the way they call out to me, they, they want me to do everything. It's, it's, it's not right. It really is not right. No, sir. I'm sorry, sir. Well, what's done is done. They'll just have to muddle through the best way they can. Uh, now, about your wife. Uh, Melba, is it? Yes, sir. Mm. Tell you what. Why don't you talk to Bruce about it? You two seem to get along so well. Yes, yes. Talk to Bruce. Now, excuse me, will you? Um, I really do have to go take a look at that poor star. Mm -hmm. Bruce, he just wasn't any help at all. Now, you listen, Paul. Suppose you had invented the greatest machine imaginable. One that would do... Oh, practically anything you can think of. How would you like it if somebody came running to you every time a bolt got loose and asked you to tighten it? But, Bruce, Melba says she's going to go on remembering me forever. We'll be man and wife forever. Till she joins me here, and then we'll still be man and wife. Maybe once she gets here, she'll change her mind. But she's only 42. She'll be remembering me for years and years and calling for me, and I'll have to put on that vapor stuff and haunt the apartment... And, and, Bruce, it's so hard to carry on a conversation with her now. It didn't used to be, but now... Well, you, you couldn't just ignore her. I love her, Bruce. Do you? Well, I did. For a very long time, right up to the moment I died. My last words were, I love you, Melba. At least, that's what I meant to say. I know I had it in my mind to say that, but I'm not positive I ever got around to saying it. Anyway, I can't just... just brush her off. My, my. You do have a conscience, don't you? Well, I hope so. It's a very fine thing to have, of course, but sometimes... Look, there's only one thing you can do. What? Get married. G married? To, to... to Melba? No, not to Melba, you idiot. How could you marry Melba? She's there and you're here. Some marriage that would be. But then, who... Whom would I marry? Oh, heavens to Betsy, Paul. The place is full of women. Say, have you ever seen Helen? Helen who? Helen of Troy, they call her. Actually, I've never met her myself, but from what they tell me... Marriages are made in heaven. So it's been said. There are those who consider this a profoundly true observation while others think it one of the silliest statements ever made. I myself have no opinion, at least none that I care to express here. But no one, so far as I know, has ever claimed that people actually get married in heaven. I'll be back shortly. Melba was a wonderful wife to Paul. But as his widow, she leaves something to be desired. Two things. She won't stop desiring him, and she won't leave him alone. In his desperation, Paul has gone to his kindred spirit, Bruce, for help. The only advice Bruce could offer was for Paul to marry again. Not his earthly wife, Melba but one of the heavenly creatures who, like Paul, expect to live on forever in whatever place it is they live on forever in. You definitely burned yourself out, little one. Mm. Too bad. Sir? Oh, sir? Now, look, Paul. This dear little star has burned itself out. Well, I knew it wouldn't be long. Uh, sir... I did what you told me to. I talked to Bruce about my problem, and you know what he said? He said, get married. It married? He said the only way to make Melba forget me is for me to get married to someone else. Someone here. Where else? What do you think of the idea? Why do you keep asking me what I think? Can't you ever think for yourself? Well, I just thought... No, no, you didn't. 
You came running to me like all the others. I'm getting tired of it. Well, if you could give me a little advice. I gave you a little advice. I said, talk to Bruce. You talked to Bruce, and he told you what he thought you should do. Now, either do it or don't do it. Is it all right? Is uh, what all right? To get married. Here. Paul, the essence of this place is perfect freedom to do as you choose. It might work out, it might not. But that's true of everything, isn't it? It's certainly true of everything I do. Do many people get married here? Well, I don't know. I do know they don't come running to me to ask, is it all right? Bruce mentioned someone called Helen. Helen of Troy? Are you asking me to pick a wife for you? Now, what else do you want me to do? Tie your shoelaces? Help you with your arithmetic? Don't you people ever grow up? I'm sorry, sir. I don't care about your being sorry. That's too easy. I care about your achieving some measure of maturity. A bit of independence, a little simple sense. Is that asking too much? Tell me, is that really asking too much? Oh, sir, I... Sometimes I feel like giving up on the whole human race. You're, you're not going to cry, are you, sir? Why not? Who has better reason to cry than I have? Nobody, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> However, we must all carry on, mustn't we? Never give up. That's my motto. Because if I gave up... Uh, don't oh, say it, sir. Please, don't say it. No. No, I won't say it. I wouldn't be so cruel, no matter how provoked. Now, Paul, I really must go to tend to that poor little star who, believe me, needs my help more than you do. Irene? It's me. Oh, just sitting around... Leonard asked me to go to that new steak place with him, but I said no. I didn't feel like it, that's why. Don't be silly. I like Leonard. He's a very nice man, but... Well, there's a beautiful moon out tonight. And I thought maybe... Oh, for heaven's sakes, what's that? Well, there was a terrible clanking noise just now and scared me to death. Oh, how could it be the radiator? The heat's not turned on yet. Is there a storm coming up or something? Look, that, that whistling sound, can't you hear it? Like a, like a terrible wind. Maybe a hurricane. What do you mean you don't hear anything? What, there goes the moon. It must be a hurricane. I mean, the moonlight will stop shining. How can it be shining where you are and not here? Oh, now it's shining here, too. <laughs> Irene, oh, are you there? Oh, are you crying about something? Oh, I thought you were. No, no reason, I just thought I heard... Well, I heard somebody crying. No more than crying, really sobbing. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Something just ran through the room. How do I know what? It disappeared into the kitchen. <laughs> Rain, there's something here in the kitchen. It, it's laughing, terrible laughing. It couldn't be Paul. Because, because it couldn't be. Paul doesn't behave that way. He just comes to the window and says, Here I am, Melba, dear. It couldn't be Paul. Here I am, Melba, dear. <gasps> he just said it. Here I am, Melba, dear. Melba, I'm here. Irene, I'm going to hang up. I've got to find out if it's Paul. And if it is Paul, I've got to know why he's behaving so peculiarly. No, no, don't come over. You, you might scare him away. I mean, after all, I'm used to these things and you're not. Bye, Irene. Hello, Melba. Paul, is it you? No, it's not Paul. <gasps> oh, don't be frightened. I'm Bruce. Bruce? Who? I don't know any Bruce. I'm Paul's new friend. His best friend, actually. But why are you here? Why isn't Paul here? He couldn't make it tonight. Why not? Nothing's happened to him, has it? What could happen? Well, nothing, I suppose. Everything's already happened. Precisely. 
Well, then why isn't he here? I've thought about him and thought about him every single day and every time I woke up during the night. I've been over every moment of every day of every year we had together. That's just him. I'm just about to start over at the beginning. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? He's not really dead as long as I remember him. He's not really alive either, is he? Well, no, but... Melba, you're wearing him out with all this remembering. Wearing him out? Yeah, back and forth, back and forth. It's very tiring, Melba. You mean he'd rather just stay where he is? I think so. Oh, nobody wants to be dead and forgotten. Wait till it's your turn. I certainly don't want to be. Wait, you'll find out. Nobody wants to be dead and forgotten. That's because they haven't tried it yet. You mean to tell me that Paul wants to be forgotten? By me? If you think you could manage it. Forget 22 beautiful years? Oh, I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't possibly. What about having 22 more beautiful years with somebody else? Like who? Well... I've heard nice things about a certain Leonard Whipple. Leonard Whipple? I've heard he's very devoted to you. But Leonard's not Paul. Leonard could never be Paul. But he could be Leonard, couldn't he? If you'd let him. Paul is the only man for me. Always was, always will be, and that is that. Oh, Melba, Melba. Why do you say, oh, Melba, Melba, like that? Because you forced me to tell you something I really have no right to tell you. What? What is it? Hardly anybody knows about it. Just me. And Paul, of course. What is it? I shouldn't repeat it. No. No. My lips are sealed. It's too private. Does it concern Paul? Is it about Paul? You won't mention it to a living soul? I won't mention it to anybody. What is it? Paul. Paul is getting married again. Paul? Is getting married again? Yes. Who to? I think her name is Helen. Is she pretty? I've never met her, but I hear she is very pretty. <sighs> Young? I believe so. Oh, how could he? How could he? That's life, Melba. Life? Paul's not alive. True, but you are, Melba. Yes, I am. Make the most of it. That's my advice to you. Thank you, Bruce, for telling me what you told me. I really appreciate it. You're quite welcome. I don't suppose Paul would ever have told me himself. Oh, eventually he would have. Maybe. Maybe not. Well, if you see him, tell him I hope he's very happy with his Helen. I'll tell him. Nice to have met you, Melba. Very nice to have met you, too, Bruce. I... Are you still sitting down or standing up? I can't quite tell. Does it really matter? Well, I'd just like to... (laughs) I don't know, shake your hand or something. <laughs> Not necessary. Not necessary at all. I I could see you to the door. No, let's just part this way. A fond adieu to you, Melba. A fond... Oh. He's gone. Just disappeared. Well, that's the way with ghosts. Oh. Who needs ghosts, anyway? With all their comings and goings. And the way they talk. Who can understand them? Hello? Irene? Irene, you are absolutely not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. You simply will not believe it. Where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Even Salome didn't know where you were. Where were you? I went to see your wife. Melba? What for? To tell her you were getting married. Bruce, you had no right to do that. Here, we do as we choose. He told you that. How did she take it? Shocked, of course. Hurt. What you'd expect. You could have told me you were going to tell her. I knew you wouldn't let me. I wouldn't have. For one very good reason. It's not true. What's not true? That I'm getting married. 
You changed your mind? Not exactly. I asked Helen. Yes? She said absolutely not. She says she's not the marrying type. But you didn't stop right there, did you? There are others. I asked Catherine. Uh, uh, I can't pronounce her last name. She used to be an empress in Russia. She laughed, fit to kill. And so did Amy and Louise and Marie. Even Salome laughed at me. Are you upset? Well, nobody likes to be laughed at. Yes, I'm upset. But on the other hand, I'm relieved, too. Bruce, I really don't want to get married. I never thought you did. Everything's so nice here, so free and sort of uninhibited, so peaceful. Leonard, it's Melba. You don't mind my calling you at your office, do you? Oh, that's good. How was the new steak place? You didn't go? On account of me, you didn't go? Oh, well, I must say, Leonard... Oh, I, I spent the evening doing various things. Things that really needed to be done. Like, I got all Paul's clothes together and packed them in boxes. Tomorrow, I'll send them to some deserving charity. <laughs> Listen, Leonard... I was thinking, as long as you didn't go to that steak place, why don't you come over here tonight and I'll cook you the best steak you ever tasted. And hash brown potatoes. Would you like that? Ah, oh, good. Well, come early and we'll have a martini first. Well, good for Melba. Good for Leonard. And good for Bruce. And for Paul, too. Good for everybody who faces up to a problem and solves it the best way possible. The solution may not be a perfect one. Solutions seldom are. But at the very least, they are an attempt to use the sense we were born with. And that's all God asks of any of us. I'll be back shortly. don't you, that the story I've just brought you is all pure fantasy. I don't know any more than you do what happens to us once we have resigned this terrestrial life, and you know as little as I do. Unless, of course, you are a ghost. Oh, if you are, I wish you'd get in touch with me. I have gobs and gobs of things I'm dying to ask you, like, uh, like, uh, well, for one thing, are you happy? Our cast included Lenka Peterson, Elliot Reed, Robert Dryden, and Gordon Gould. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Who told you? I saw it happen. I saw it happen. Now, Mary, you must get a hold of yourself. He was shot just as he turned the corner. His revolver was still in his holster. He never had a chance. Joe never had a chance. I know how hard it is, Mary. I saw it happen. Oh, why? Why did I see it happen? I saw it happen. As if I were sitting in a theater. And it was all taking place on a giant screen. And from that night on, I saw it happen. Every night. Every night I was condemned to relive it again. And again. And again. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.